I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews with Richard Yan, co-founder of Veet. Richard, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Ashton. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. Very welcome. Let's dive straight into it. Uh, Veet's public chain, unique solutions uh, that are driving innovation in the blockchain space. Let's start our conversation off with just a high level overview of the exact solutions that Veet has been working on and what is your goal in, in innovating in this space and then we'll dive into the details. Okay, great. In one sentence, Veet is a zero fee layer one with an order book decentralized exchange. So that's a mouthful, let me unpack very quickly. <laughs> it's a layer one, so it's a public blockchain with smart contract capabilities. It is zero fee because the transactions that happen on Veet, whether it is a simple transfer or a smart contract transfer or a smart contract transaction, they incur zero fees. There's no gas, period. And I'll explain how we get that. And I also mentioned that we have an order book decentralized exchange. So I think the concept of a DEX is important to your audience members, mm -hmm. but there aren't a lot of order book DEXs out there. Mm -hmm. And lots of AMMs, such as Uniswap, SushiSwap, they are market order based. That means you can only do trades at the top of the book or the worst. Um, or yeah, so so basically you can only buy at the highest price or sell at the lowest price possible in the order in the uh, prevailing market. You aren't able to provide a resting order of saying I won't buy uh, above this price and I won't sell below that price. Mm -hmm. And we provide that capability through an order book decentralized exchange. Very cool. Yeah, a lot to dig into. Um, I would love to know more about uh, the consensus. Uh, you know, when did you start working on it, and and why did you take this approach uh, in the way that you've developed Veed? Right. So let me um, answer my own question earlier that I kind of threw out about the zero fee nature. That is a very important part of our value proposition. So we thought that for Web three to prevail users will carry over habits from the web two days. They want things fast, they want things now, they want things free. Mm -hmm. And so they, like for example, we already come across NFT project creators that want to build on our chain because they do not think that their demographic, there are their users like the concept of having to pay fees for transactions. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to come up with a zero fee solution. And the way we do it is it is a locking model. The more VEAT tokens you lock, the more TPS you get. Um, you, everyone gets a base, a small amount of TPS to begin with that you have to pay no fee for. It's for sort of a freemium model. And so in times of severe network congestion, the amount of VEAT tokens that you would have to lock would need to go up in order for you to send a transaction. And the same thing goes with smart contract transactions. Now, the point is there's zero gas expenditure, however. So if you need to sell your V tokens after the transaction is over, you can feel free to do so. And you can do it essentially. Um, so, so you can do it with no V lost in the process. Mm -hmm. So the way we uh, achieve this zero fee uh, design, there are really three components, right? So the first one I already mentioned, that is locking. The more feet you lock, the more TPS you get. The second one is the ledger. We have something called a DAG ledger, directed a cyclic graph, that can scale much better than existing blockchain architecture. And we are inspired by Nano, which created the first zero-fee non-smart contract chain out there. They don't want to put on smart contract, and we were able to put it in. But their architecture is something called the block lattice flavor of DAG. And we use the exact same sort of ledger. And that scalability essentially means we don't have to resort to using fees to restrict people from trading. And then the number three reason is we use delegated proof of stake. So the inflation from the uh, coin base will go to reward the small number of validators for our chain. So this way we compensate for the loss of transaction fees, which normally consists of part of the income for the validators. So those would be the three reasons why we are able to do zero fee chain. 
And on top of all of that, as I mentioned, we have a decentralized exchange. It's called BTEX. And the, there's a few unique things about it. I'm happy to get into that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I would love to know more about that. Um, I, let's, let's go through that first, and then I'd love to get a snapshot of you know, how long your team's been working on it and where we're at right now. But let's, let's talk about the DEX, because it is uh, a huge differentiator from Uniswap and all of these DEX where you can only place market orders, which is a huge restriction in decentralized exchanges right now. Right. So I think our angle has always been what the users want. So you can see that manifested in the zero fee design for the chain. You also see that in the DEX because we think that most of the traders, whale or retail alike, they like the order book approach. They don't just want to place an order in, in the form of a market order. And if you look at all the centralized exchanges out there, they don't opt for an AMM. They all opt for an order book as their initial design. So we thought that if we wanted to make a decentralized version of those things, then we should try to accommodate what users are familiar with. And in this case is the order book decentralized exchange. So what's so special about it other than this? Number one is that the uh, the DEX itself has its native token called VX. You can earn VX by liquidity mining, meaning placing order book orders on the order book. You can earn it by trading on the exchange. You can earn it by referring someone to the exchange or listing a coin on the exchange. And, and finally, you can earn it by staking VEAT to the contract of the um, for for the uh, the DEX contract. The DEX is a huge smart contract, and when you lock VEAT or stake VEAT for the benefit of that smart contract, you are providing that contract quota to operate. So this is the locking model I previously mentioned, and now I'm saying you can lock VEAT specifically for this smart contract in order to obtain VX the coin. Now, what's the point of getting VX? The VX actually entitles you to distribution from the exchange. So all the fees collected by the exchange go into a pool and then it gets sent out to the VX holders. VX had no pre mine, uh, sorry, had no pre sale, no private sale, no public sale. The development team takes 10% dev tax, but then everything else gets distributed to all the, uh, the VX gets distributed to the min miners. And then Whoever holds the VX, as long as you stake it, you receive the distribution, as I previously talked about. So one other inflection point about VTEX is that we are about to go implement these bridges for VTEX, for cross-chain trading. So as you can imagine, for VT native coins to trade on VTEX, mm -hmm. that's completely trustless, decentralized, no problem. Mm -hmm. No third-party middle man. But to do cross-chain trading, if you want to do Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana on VTEX, there needs to be a cross-chain process. So currently we use these gateways, which we hope to replace with decentralized bridges, which we're working on. The VIT to BSC bridge is already in our test net, and that's, that will go live into our main net uh, in months. And we are currently working on VIT to other ETH compatible chains at the moment um i, I i'd say I, I probably also need to mention one other thing which is these gateways for trading cross-chain trading mm -hmm. most of them are community run so we currently have um 60 coins traded and adding five coins per month thanks to the permissionless coin adding effort by the community so uh, we currently have incentive programs running that would allow the community to run their gateways to add liquidity and to essentially enrich the whole ecosystem of coin trading on VTEX. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah, a lot to cover there, Richard. And you, you mentioned there about getting outside of the V ecosystem into Ethereum. Um, so from what I understand, the you know, because a lot of the decentralized exchanges like Uniswap only works with Ethereum tokens and you can't do cross-chain and that's a huge limitation. Um, so with V, having a decentralized exchange that has some kind of EVM compatibility to work with DeFi on Ethereum, uh, is that one of the top priorities of, of making like a, a more holistic uh, blockchain inclusion uh, in V? 
Yeah. So I would say for something like uh, Uniswap or SushiSwap, they essentially allow trading of wrap tokens. So WPTC mm -hmm. and say W Solana or something. And we essentially provide the same. If you want to have assets on one chain, enter another chain, really have no other way than to just wrap those tokens. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is the security of the, in, the original native tokens that get deposited through this process, right? So you don't want to get into a situation of the Solana bridge hack, the wormhole that costs $200 million or so. And so that's why we want to switch from a gateway approach to the bridging solution. Mm -hmm. But I think as, as any exchange business, the way to scale is to provide a good user experience, to have lots of coins for trading and have good order book liquidity. And we're currently incentivizing on all three fronts. Mm -hmm. And I think that the bridging will provide more security and therefore allow uh, and give people more comfort in terms of trading, doing cross-chain trading on our chain. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And, you know, we talked a lot about the DEX and, and the, the chain itself and, and obviously the, the exchange of uh, coins is going to be super important, but I'm also curious just about the ecosystem for development on, on Vite and if there's also a focus on uh, creating other dApps or things outside of DeFi as uh, blockchains start seeping into other industries outside of finance. Yes, absolutely. So we are a layer one. As I mentioned earlier, I said we are a zero fee layer one with an order book decentralized exchange. But we're more than that, right? So the focus is we are a layer one. That means we're kind of like an operating system. And then you can really build any kind of app on it, ben benefiting from the security of the chain itself. And then, so we currently already have a community built NFT platform. We have a community wallet. And then we have a community built um, a, a staking reward protocol, similar to a pancake swap. So uh, I can, uh, let's see. And then one other very important thing is we have our own programming language called Solidity++. Mm -hmm. That is what all of these uh, dApps are built upon. Solidity++ is a uh, asynchronous version of Solidity. So that means when you try to call a function, instead of waiting for the return value from that function to execute the next line, you can call a function and then execute the next line while waiting for the return. So you don't have to wait to execute. You can do things in parallel. Hmm. Anyway, the point is we are going to be EVM compatible soon. Mm -hmm. So that means all apps written in Solidity can be deployed on Beat, and all developers familiar mm -hmm. with Solidity can now also write Solidity code that compiles into uh, bytecode that's compatible with our virtual machines. So to answer your question, absolutely. We already have applications that run on the Vite chain outside of the decentralized exchange, the NFT platform, the, uh, the staking protocol, and, the, and uh, a community wallet. But other than these, um, we are hoping to attract gamers, game, game developers, uh, social platform developers, um, we have a hackathon out now, mm -hmm. and we have a hackathon. We run a hackathon every quarter, at least one hackathon. Currently with Gitcoin, we're talking about Dora hacks and possibly Dev Post to do more hackathons to appeal to more mm -hmm. uh, developers. And uh, plus the EVM compatibility, I, I think that we're going to see uh, acceleration of the explosion of our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Great to know. Um, that there's already a community working on, you know, the wallet and other kinds of applications. And it, it must be hard to manage uh, uh, an entire layer one that is working on, you know, different industries and different infrastructure layers all at the same time. How do you manage to prioritize and focus, you know, what needs to be the most important thing that, that comes out next on Veed? <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, it's uh, incredibly hard. That's why we're also recruiting like crazy. So I just put four different roles in our LinkedIn. We need a DEX strategy lead to help expand our VTEX. We are looking for a business operations lead to be a second brain to the co-founders. 
we have a software architect role out where they hired someone for that role, but we have more openings. So we can hire yet another software architect. Mm -hmm. This will be a person working on our consensus algorithm uh, on the clients and the compiler, all the backend hardcore things. Uh, we also have a job ad out for blockchain, uh, blockchain, so blockchain developer. So this would be full stack plus knowledge with solidity. And if you have mobile app development, that'd be even a plus. So yes, so recruiting is a big deal. And we are also getting help outside of, um, of, of our own immediate team. We just onboarded two advisors. I know our community was asking about this. Yeah. So this is a perfect time to announce. So one person is Luke Kim, and he is a advisor to the blockchain uh, Berkeley Blockchain Accelerator. He is advisor to multiple other uh, Web3 gaming and um, uh, investment funds. And he's basically a power connector in the crypto space. So he's currently actually at uh, New York uh, doing a Solana hacker, attending Solana Hacker House. So hopefully he can bring us some good news from developers that might not only be exclusively interested in building on Solana. And one other advisor we have, her name is Sierra, Sierra Sun. She used to be the chief strategy officer at Huobi, one of the biggest exchanges in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so she now runs her own fund called uh, C Square Ventures. Um, also a power connector, extremely, extremely well versed in the space. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping that she can also help us build out all the uh, the right relationships with exchanges, market makers, uh, capital allocators, and so on. Um, and so both of them will be communicating with me on a regular basis as we make sure we have the, we keep a pulse on the development of the industry, which is extremely difficult to keep track of. Obviously, it's increase, increasingly hard. So I think, yeah, uh, when to answer your question of how we manage the growth, I think it just <laughs> comes down to having more brains to help Definitely. Yeah. And I did see your community very active on Twitter asking uh, about this interview and, and you know, when are you going to announce the advisors and the new team members and everything. So it's great to have that yeah. instant feedback uh, from, from the community, just all super involved. Um, now, yeah. if, if there's other people that you know want to either apply for those jobs that you mentioned or just want to participate or want to use the decks and the wallet and, and get involved with the community of Veet, what is the best way for them to learn more? So for people that want to apply to those jobs, just go to my LinkedIn. So if you just Google Richard Yan LinkedIn, and you will find my most recent post being a collection of all the openings, and you can just directly apply through those links. For people that want to know more about Vit, Vitex, Vitbridge, Vitbridge is the name for the bridging solution we're building for Vitex. Um, go to our website v.org and also connect with me on twitter i'm at twitter.com slash genso09 g-e-n-t-s-o-09 and yeah look forward to connecting and a, a good a good comment about our community i'm actually very pleased to see uh, good growth in our community despite the fact that we're not yet solidity compatible so developers are investing their time to learn about solidity plus plus because i think they are interested in building on our chain um, and i'm very grateful for that and then in terms of the activeness of communities asking questions um you know in preparation in anticipation of this uh, this chat between you and i ashton i i also want to say thank you thanks for paying attention and Vite will only thrive because of a strong community so we're happy you're here Amazing. Thank you so much, Richard. I will leave all those links as well. Uh, just a fast track to your LinkedIn and to the Veet website and the decks and everything in the description box below. All the best with everything related to Veet moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Thanks a lot, Ashton. Look forward to connecting again.